Hey guys, what's up? Um, just wanted to apologize for the sound of the wind in this video that you're getting ready to watch. There were some spots where it got kind of noisy. I guess the microphone was facing the wind and I get a little bit hard to hear, but they only last for a short period of time and then, um, then it quiets back down. So I'll make sure that I work on that in the future. So enjoy. Hey, what's up guys? Um, out here this morning, old man winter has returned. It's a little chilly out. Um, got a little bit of a wind chill uh, that we're having to deal with so that'll give me an opportunity to talk a little bit about making sure you're prepared for the weather conditions when you're going out in cold weather painting um, you can see I've broken out the old coveralls uh, my advice to you is put on as much uh, clothes as many clothes as you think you need and then put on a little bit more because when you're out here for an hour or so and you're painting and you're not moving around a whole lot it, things tend to get colder so don't just step outside and go oh it's not that bad and throw on a coat so I've got on uh, insulated uh, long johns and then I've got these coveralls um, I've got a sweater on too between that so so I'm not, staying nice and warm uh, cover your head up makes a big difference so I'm gonna be doing a sky painting this morning um, so because of that I've kind of got the camera down low and tilted up so hopefully you can see some of these clouds and you can't see all of them but I want to make sure you can kind of see all this stuff so um, and to, to, to do that I'm going to be focusing on you know how can I compose my canvas so that it it really uh, is about the sky and I talked about this before I say you know figure out what it is that you want to paint that's your first job um, some people don't think about that part and they just come out and plop down wherever and say okay what well, I would to paint what's in front of me but you should be painting things that you're interested in so this morning with these nice clouds and the Sun was you know raking across them and making some really nice form and I thought I'm gonna get out and do a um, do a sky painting this morning so so figure it out figure out what it is that you want to paint and um, and then you know think about how you're going to compose the shapes on your canvas so that what you want to paint is what shows uh, shows off the most in the painting you know and it's kind of like you have a, a, a main actor and some supporting roles so whatever it is you want to paint that's your that's your center of interest that's going to be your main actor uh, and the supporting roles are going to be the other parts of the painting they're going to do everything they can do to beef up that one part of the painting and really make it you know shine some All right. I'm going to start with a um, with a tone, a wash on the canvas, and uh, let me lay out my colors. Now you may notice my palette is a little crazy looking. It's got a lot of paint on it. You might want to clean yours more thoroughly in between. Just do what feels right for you. Um, I tend to use up some of this thicker paint that's not completely dry as I go, so I leave it on there and I just wipe this down to a, a sort of a let the colors mix in there and turn kind of this gray color that I find works as a nice uh, base to paint on. So. so I've got that's cadmium red light that I just put up there. That's my vibrant red. This is cadmium yellow light. It's my vibrant yellow. We're going to be working with the three primaries, red, yellow, and blue. And then we've got the three earth tone primaries, which are burnt sienna, yellow, ochre, and black. Those are our duller tones uh, primaries. So. I'm saying that black is actually more like a blue, it's just a dulled down version of blue because you'll see how it can um, make green when you mix it with yellow and that sort of thing. So, so vibrant primaries, duller primaries here. I feel like that's a good system for uh, anyone who's starting out painting because it really simplifies color mixing because we all know how to make green, yellow and blue. We know how to make orange and purple, but we're never really taught um, how to make duller versions of those colors. So this is a nice way to be able to dull down those colors. So if you want a green, you can mix a nice vibrant green. If you want to dull it down, you can mix a green out of these two colors here and use that. Same thing with orange. If you want a vibrant orange, you can mix these two. And if you want to dull it down, you can mix those two and make a nice dull orange and add it to it. So it really gives you a nice range of color. Another thing I want to briefly touch on is, you know, a lot of times when I'm laying out my colors, um, I'm, I'm kind of just thinking about what it is I want to paint and I'm trying to picture it. 
on the canvas and just kind of let it sit in so so I'm looking here and I'm kind of seeing well how do I want this painting to look because if I can kind of see it on the canvas before I get going um, then I'll have a kind of a clear picture in my mind of what it is I want to do so again we've got cadmium red light cadmium yellow light ultramarine blue burnt sienna yellow ochre and ivory black And we're going to put out some titanium white here. And I've got my medium which is two-thirds Galkit and I mix it with one-third Gamsol paint thinner so that just thins the medium a little bit. This is what I'm going to be dipping into as I paint. I'm going to have to do a little MacGyver thing here. I forgot my cup that I poured my medium into, so uh, there's always going to be a couple things that try to stop you from painting, and uh, you really got to just plow through those things. Um, there's a couple things, like if you forget your white paint, you're probably going to be in trouble. Um, if you forget your brushes, well, you might be able to paint a whole painting with, with just the paper towels, but uh, so there are some basics, but this little cup I can usually, uh, usually figure something out, so let me uh, figure out what I'm going to do here, and I'll be right back. All right. A water bottle. All right, so um, this is this is an important step. Um, you want to you want to whip up your white paint a little bit. So I'm going to take a little bit of the medium, and um, usually I work with my palette flat on my easel. This is for the demonstrations. I put them up like this, and I don't usually work with the sun on my canvas. Try to find a shady spot. I just do this so you guys can see it. Um, and I put a couple drops of the medium right into the white paint, and. Um, just soften it up a little bit. The paint has a tendency to be thick um, and kind of stiff when it comes out of the tube, especially on on um, chilly mornings like this morning. So you just want to whip it up, and you can do that more when it's laying flat. Um, you really want to whip it up so it's nice, like you know, um, nice and, and fluid. And this will help you blend the colors into it as you go. Make sure you're laying out enough paint too. I mean, you can see I got a lot of paint on there. We're working on a 20 by 24 canvas this morning. And um, I'm going to be doing a tone on it. I'm dipping my, my paper towel down in my medium. And I'm going to go right into my ivory black. And we're just going to touch it, just in little places. We just want to kind of evenly disperse this first. And then we're going to get our, our paper towel nice and wet with the medium. And just wipe it all around. So we're putting it on and we're wiping it back out. And try not to leave it too thick. And make sure you get around the edges because that's the place that you really want it to be covered. If it, you know, um, if we want it to be darker in any one spot, it could be darker around the edges. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It can have some variation in it. The thing you want to be careful not to do is get too much paint on the canvas. If you get too much paint on there, you'll have trouble wiping it back off, and uh, it'll always be mixing too much into your colors. If it mixes it just a little bit, that's okay. And um, it's actually going to set up just a little bit, you know, in the next 10 minutes or so. So when we go to put on the, the light paint at the end, it won't mix too much. Um, 
All right, so now we're gonna take our paper towel and just like before, this is how we're gonna start with using the paper towel. I don't want you using any brushes for these beginner lessons. Um, and uh, when I normally paint, I, I, I don't always start with a paper towel. Sometimes I'll start with a brush, but I feel like when you're first starting out, it's really helpful to, um, to just focus on big shapes. So I'm already thinking here, I've got a, a hill coming up in the foreground like this, and then I've got um, another hill right here and I want to keep the, the, the hills down low because I want this painting to really be about the sky. And uh, so I've got this kind of zigzag motion going up to the sky. So that's nice because it will lead your eye up to the sky. And at this point you want to decide, well, what is dark and what is light? So I'm squinting down and it, you want to get it as simple as possible. So just dark shapes versus light shapes. And um, your light shapes are going to be right now what you leave on the canvas and you're just going to be washing in or wiping in these dark shapes. So we're going to come, this is the dark that I use for all my darks um, starting off. It's kind of a go-to dark. It's just um, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And this makes a nice dark color. And then and this can be a little bit washy. Uh, you know, you, you don't want it to cover too much because we want to have room to go darker if we want. So um, I'm squinting out there and I've, I see almost the whole hillside as a dark compared to the sky because I want the sky to be nice and light. So I'm just going to kind of brush in these shapes of these, this hillside here. And there's a line of trees that runs right up here like this. And so at this point I'm not concerned with trees like branches, uh, little you know twigs and all that stuff. Just squinting my eyes down till my eyes are almost closed. I'm basically looking through my eyelashes. I'm saying, well, what are the big shapes there? And that's what I'm going after right now. It's just these big shapes. So there's not a lot of darks in my sky, but I can pick out where there are some shadow parts of the clouds um, at this point. So I've got this zigzag here, right? So this line's going to come up here and then we got a line that comes up this way. So I want the movement of my clouds to go up this way. And um, they're kind of doing that, but I'm going to exaggerate it just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and brush in this cloud right here. And then there's like a, another cloud up above it. And um, Okay. So we've got some movement going on in here. It's subtle, but you can you can already start to feel that there's something happening, and it gives your eye a way to move around the canvas. So I love big zigzag shapes, or what they call S compositions, and that's where your eye can kind of meander through the composition. So anytime you have one line going up this way, see if you can't find something to pull your eye back this way, um, and then you can even go up again. Now you don't want to do that too much, or it could get tiresome. You'll be going burr, 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 back and forth, but but basically a few. Uh, alternating angles in a painting is they're always it's always going to improve the composition um, and then we've got a tree that comes up to the side here uh, and I'm just it's, it's over here to the side a little further but I'm gonna pull it in so if you see something you want for your composition and it's off to the side don't be afraid to grab it and pull it in and that's just gonna help kind of throw your eye up and around that corner there This tree here and then there's some trees up here that'll do the same thing on this side so we're kind of getting a circular motion I'm gonna get a different paper towel now Actually, I'm, not, I'm going to use the same paper towel for a second because what I want to do now is, um, so we do our dark shapes. The next step is the darker darks. And if you watch my other videos, you'll know that this is kind of a process that helps you establish design early on. So I'm going back into my medium. I'm going back into my dark 
paint here, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, but I'm putting a little more paint on the paper towel this time, so it's going to be a little bit more opaque, and I want to pick out where this tree line goes up this hill here, and it kind of comes up here, and then we've got some trees that come around in the back here, just smaller, they're just up here, and then um, we've even got some little patterns, I guess some little cattle trails and that sort of thing in this foreground field so I'm gonna kind of brush them in there's some mud there um, just some little basic shapes and I don't want to lose this angle here so I want to come back and make sure I'm keeping that angle so okay um, now we've got some things going on here where uh, the sun is coming out and then the sun's going away and so you have to kind of pick and choose and right now I like the way that the landscape is dark and the sky, the clouds are bright so I'm going to go with that. So I'm going to go ahead and go and try to get some of these foreground colors while the sun is away because that's all going to change when the sun comes back out. So if I squint down, I'm looking, there's a green field out there, but it's not very green. It's kind of a dull green, so I'm going to use my dull or uh, my earth tone primaries. I'm using ivory black and yellow ochre to make a nice dull green color. I'm just going to brush that in, or wipe that in, just real quick. And notice that it's light, but it's not too light. I want to keep it dark enough that it stays down here. I don't want it competing with any of my my uh, sky colors or my sky values. And when I use the word value, I mean how dark or how light is something. So um, if I took a black and white photograph of it, you know, what would it look like? Would, would the sky be lighter than the landscape? So I want all these colors down here to have a darker value than the colors I'm going to be using up here. Now this foreground field, there's some of this green gets carried over right here. And there's like a, there's some snow out there, so there's also a blue. Um, but because I don't want a real vibrant blue, I'm going to go right into the black and watch how this works. Okay, so this is just black and uh, white. So I'm basically making like a, just a gray, but when I put it on here with this warmer colors, it's going to look blue. And that's going to suggest some snow. Same thing over here. There's a nice dark red color to this foreground field. It's, it's got like some red clay mud. Um, so I want to go in with my burnt sienna. I want to keep all these colors toned down. I want, don't want them to be too vibrant. So I'm going to go right in with my burnt sienna. And you see it's dark. It's, it's, it's red, but it's darker in value. So that's going to pull that forward a little bit. And I want to just hint at some of this red color in these trees because it is springtime, so there are some warm colors coming on in the trees here. And I'm going to go grab some of my, my gray color that I'm using for the snow. and do the same thing that I did over the green. I'm just going to do it right here in the foreground. Just hinting at some, some snow there. Alright, now for the sky, what I want to do is I want to um, go in with basically I want to paint my cloud color in there first and then I'm going to come back with uh, with some blues and we'll cut right back into the uh, the clouds and actually shape the clouds with the uh, with the blue color so we'll be doing negative shape painting where I'm actually painting the object by painting what's around it so I'm going to go right in with my paper towel and mix up a nice bright uh, color but I don't want it too vibrant because we're saving all of our vibrant colors till the end so I'm using yellow ochre and um, burnt sienna 
make it a kind of a creamy orange color. And then I want to pay attention to my shape of my clouds and just kind of sketch in. And you want to make them a little bit bigger than you actually want them because you're going to come down and shape them down with the, with the blue sky. So we'll just brush in here. And make sure you're going back as you go and putting enough paint on the canvas, uh, on your on your paper towel, because if you don't get enough paint on it, you're just going to be smudging around colors, and they won't they won't be vibrant enough. Don't be afraid to, to have a little fun with this. You know, you can, clouds are wild, so you're not really trying to capture exactly what's up there. You're just trying to get a feel for, for the shape of the clouds and that sort of thing. And there's also sort of a darker purplish reddish color. So I'm gonna add a little burnt sienna to this gray that I've got. So now I've got a nice, uh, a nice shadow value. So I've got it. It's purple, but it's not too dark. You notice it's it's dark, but it's not going to compete with my darks down here. I'm just going to put it in kind of on the underside. So I'm starting to shape these clouds up. So you've got a layer of clouds here, and then a layer of clouds here. So, so the next shadow um, is going to be actually down here. And you see how it's starting to already build some form up in the clouds. I just recently went to Richmond, Virginia and went to the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts and uh, saw the McLaughlin Collection of American Art, which uh, if you're anywhere near Richmond, Virginia and you're interested in, in American painting or paintings or Impressionism, I definitely suggest going and checking it out. It's awesome. They have um, some John Singer Sargent, some Robert Henry's, um, a lot of George Bellows paintings, William Merritt Chase, I mean some, some of the big greats uh, in, in American landscape painting. Um, are on display there and it's just a beautiful collection so that's at the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts you know anytime you have a chance to study art um, whether it's through art books or on the internet um, I think it's important uh, you know you seek out paintings that you love and 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 study them and and if you can see art in person it's really uh, it really can make a difference so if there's a museum or a gallery you you can go check out some paintings. That can really get the, the juices flowing and get you fired up to go paint. I always come back just ready to go when, I'm, when I get back from the museum. So I uh, had, a, had a wonderful time visiting there. All right, so I'm gonna do this sky color. And I'm gonna make a nice green blue. Now we wanna do some vibrant colors at this point. I'm gonna come right in with my yellow and my blue. And I'll make a nice greenish, bluish color. And we want it to be a little bit more green at this point, and then we're going to add more blue as we come up into the sky. So we start with this greenish color. Make sure you're putting enough paint on there. So I've got a nice green color here. I'm going to add a little bit more blue. And when I squint down, the blue is just a little bit darker than, than the value of the cloud. So, but it's not so dark that it's going to be competing with anything down here. So this is where squinting can really help you out. You want to make sure that your blue is the right blue, the right value. Um, so 
there's a nice greenish blue color. Now I want to come back with a clean paper towel. Lay out some clean white paint. And go back into my medium. Like Grand Central Station out here this morning. I thought, oh, I'm in a dead end, a bold back road, there'll be nobody out here, but uh, apparently there's a lot of activity. I guess maybe kids are on a uh, two hour delay this morning, so that might be what's going on. All right, so here comes the sun, it might change everything, but maybe you can see the, the colors a little bit more on the canvas. But uh, So I'm just focused on this bluish green, and now I'm gonna come right back into this green with my blue, and um, work it right back into there. Now see that's too light. Uh, I want this to be a little bit darker because as the sky goes up it actually gets darker in value. So somewhere right in there is going to be good for right in here. But then as I come up in the sky, the higher I get in the sky, the more that I want this blue to be a nice dark blue. So now I'm going to start with my dark blue up in here and work my way down. It'll be a little darker. Dark blue and I'm going to work my way down and see how when I do this I'm actually drawing the edge of the clouds. So I'm painting the sky but what I'm actually doing is I'm painting the, the, where you're seeing the sky through the clouds. So we're drawing some clouds in there. And there's a nice dark blue over here. See, you can um, you can leave some of the cloud color, and you can come and break it up, and it looks like the, the, you're seeing the sky through the clouds. So see that? That breaks it up a little bit. And again, you don't have to get the exact shape of the clouds. Um, you know, at this point, you're just kind of composing your your painting. And sometimes it's good to take a step back and just look at your work, um, kind of come out of what you're, what you're doing for a second and just take a couple steps back and just take a look and make sure everything's still working like you want to. And it's a good time to take a deep breath. I think sometimes we forget we get too anxious to get everything just right. And um, this is supposed to be, you know, something that you enjoy doing and, and something that brings joy to you. So I know it's, it's frustrating in the beginning, and I guarantee you that if you guys are starting out right now and you're... And you're um, you're doing, you know, your, some of your first plein air paintings, or if you've been painting for a little while, but you're, you just started going outside and painting, you're going to have times where you get frustrated, and I can almost guarantee you that you'll, you'll have experienced some of those times if you've gone out a few, few times already. Uh, you're gonna have problems setting up your gear, and uh, you might get frustrated with not being able to get the paint to come off the brush or come off the paper towel um, as easily as, as it looks. And that's all perfectly normal. I was watching this interview with Mike Tyson this morning, and uh, most of it made no sense whatsoever. <laughs> but, the, but he did say one thing. He said that he tries to teach his daughter that uh, disappointment is part of life and that when you're trying to be the best at something, you're going to even see more disappointment than when you're not trying. So, uh, and I thought, well, that's a really good, you know, that's a really profound thought there that um, of, of course we're, we're going to have disappointments, especially when we're trying hard. So I always think to myself when I, when I have a disappointment, I don't see it as a disappointment. I see it as a sign that I'm trying hard because if you're not trying, then you're not going to be, you know, you're not going to be uh, succeeding, but you're also not going to be disappointed. So if you're getting disappointed, it means that you're putting things in motion and you're heading towards those times when you are happy with your paintings. So don't get discouraged and just keep, keep trying it and keep going at it. And I think that that could apply to almost anything in life. Um, it's kind of like the concept that success is, is being able to fail uh, over and over again without losing enthusiasm. And I think
think that really, you know, speaks a lot of, uh, to um, determination and um, and perseverance in art. It's a it's an important thing. A lot of people just give up. They say oh, this is too hard. I'm giving up. But just keep trying and, and just keep doing it, and eventually you'll find that you, you get over that one. And then things, you know, you start to able to be able to do things on the canvas um, without a whole lot of trouble. All right, now I want to get these these greens a little lighter down here. So I'm just going to mix in some more white, and I'm going to come right back in over top of them. And that's too light, so you can test it and see how it works on there. Um, that's, that's probably more like what I want right there. So, nice vibrant color. And I want this area to be my center of interest. So I'm careful not to put too many lights over here near this cloud. Um, I really want to keep my lightest lights right up here so it kind of zigs your eye up and then you can kind of have fun exploring this little area right here. Um, so at this point, now, I'm going to um, stop with the paper towels and I'm going to get out a few brushes. So these are all flat bristle brushes. Uh, I've got like a size 10, a couple, like maybe a size, a couple size 6's and a size 8. Like I said in the other videos, if, if you haven't watched the very first video, if you're curious about my materials, I really go into depth about my materials on that number one video. So if you search Kyle Buckland Plein Air Demo number one, uh, the number sign, and then the, the number one, uh, you'll see a lot of information about my, my materials. And I also put a list of the materials in the description too, so don't forget to, if you're wondering what, uh, for, if you forget what colors or what sizes the brushes I use, I try to put all that stuff down there for everybody. So. And again, I can't uh, stress how important it is to kind of center yourself sometimes when you're painting. So I'm making a transition now. I'm getting out my paintbrushes. I want to just take a br deep breath and just take a moment. And it's, it's you know, when you, when you do that, when you pay attention to what you're hearing, you know, if you could just take a minute to look around while you're painting and um, just observe things, observe you know what the colors are that you're seeing the sounds that you're hearing how the air feels um, you know whether it's cold hot humid dry are there any smells in the air this morning there's sort of a frosty cold smell for we got a little bit of snow last night so and just take a minute to kind of do that and just you know, I think of like when you see an animal like a cat, if you've ever seen a cat when it goes outside, a lot of times it'll just take a minute to just observe everything. And really that puts you in that nice space where you can really enter into the creative zone because the creative zone starts to, to really flow when um, you come out of your mind and you kind of come into the present moment and you become aware of everything around you. So, so sometimes it helps. Oh, look, we're getting some nice buzzards up there flying around. That's cool. We'll pop them in here in a minute. But it really helps to be able to just, ah, and that's what I love about painting outside. It's just so peaceful, and there's just a, a renewing uh, quality to it that's just, it's a lot of fun. So, so don't forget to, to stop it and take it all in while you're working. All right, so I'm going to come back into these trees now. I've got some brushes out here, and I don't want to do too much with the trees, but I want to pull all this a little bit more forward and, and put it out in front of these, these clouds here. So I'm going to come and I'm going to make a nice, uh, I'm going to come back into my dark, just my burnt sienna and the ultramarine blue. I'm going to add a little bit of white to it. This is going to make it just a little bit more opaque. If I add too much white now, it's going to become chalky, so I don't want too much white. I just want a little bit of white. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to kind of sketch in, there's a fence line here, so I'm going to sketch in some little fence posts. Come some geese. They gotta make it into the video. So I'm gonna do some little fence posts right here coming up. 
and then just like I did in the other videos I'm not gonna try to draw a thousand branches I just want to brush in a tone so I'm gonna mix a nice tone here I'm holding my brush you see I'm not holding it like a pencil I'm holding it kind of like a uh, like a sword or uh, you know that that allows me to use my whole arm um, so that I'm not so constricted trying to get up you know you want to stand back um, and paint paint from the shoulder so I'm just gonna brush in a, a tone right here over the sky in areas and then even back here on this hillside same thing just a just a suggestion of some stuff and you see that because these trees back here on the hillside are are a little smaller we're already starting to suggest some depth and then even over here we've got this tree coming in from the side here just a tone see I'm just real lightly too I'm letting the brush just kind of skim across the canvas I'm holding it kind of perpendicular no, I, I guess I don't know I'm holding it like this <laughs> flat up against the uh, a canvas uh, and that lets the side of the brush do the painting so you get this nice kind of a scumble effect and you can go different ways you know um, there's not any right way to do this but but what you want is just a nice thin tone on the canvas that, that, that suggests a bunch of branches and then I've got a little tree I want to pull in I'm even gonna make up some stuff right there just to kind of throw your eye back up and around there so and there's a nice dark line on the top of that hill over there that's where there's brush at the bottom of the tree line so I want to use my same dark here just now clean your brush off as you go I've got my, my Gamsol paint thinner in a brush washer down here and I'm cleaning off my brush as I work so. funny it doesn't seem funny because right now you guys are all watching me on YouTube but the reality of it is that I'm standing out here in the middle of a field at the end of a road talking to myself so I wonder how many of these people don't realize that the cameras here and they must think oh that's one of those crazy artists <laughs> they're probably waiting for me to cut off my ear like Van Gogh or something uh, so I'm bringing some of these warmer colors into the foreground here there's some nice oranges but again they're not anywhere near as bright as anything in the sky so they're so I'm just using the burnt sienna and yellow ochre and not a lot of white just a little bit of white and I'm just going to use these shapes to and you can dip your brush in your medium as you go you want to make paint nice and fluid so I'm dipping down in my medium and then watch how I use these shapes to pull your eye into the composition so start off big here and then as we come up we make these shapes smaller and that creates depth in the piece um, and then I'm going to echo that movement with the same color just add a little bit of lighter green to it to kind of push it back into the distance and then I'm going to come back and go this way with a brush stroke and watch how I can paint this tree tree trunk just by painting the, the field around it. Okay, so we're not getting in there and painting a bunch of dark lines. I'm just painting around what's there. So that's nice because now we've got this movement, this movement, and then the clouds. So all that early planning is really starting to pay off at this point. And don't get concerned with any one part. You want to try to bring everything up together. Uh, so we don't want to try to finish any one part before we get everything else. So we're keeping everything at the same level of finish. And I really love this snow that's happening in the foreground. It's just this nice subtle blue. So I am going to add a little bit of blue now to that gray color that we were using earlier for the snow. Just to blue it up a little bit. Um, and 
and we can use a little bit of thicker paint at this point because we're laying on some lighter colors um, we want the lights to kind of come forward a little bit <clears throat> and notice I'm not painting the whole thing blue I'm just kind of coming in and touching little bits of it just little spots there's actually a million little tiny white spots out there but I'm not going to do that because it would just drive your eyes crazy trying to look at it so I'm just picking out some that will help lead your eye into the painting this way and I'm gonna do the same thing over here like I did before put a little bit of green in it that's too much green I'm gonna lead your eye back this way but be careful not to paint over your darks here because you want to leave those darks for the, the fence post and the tree there even get another fence post way out there just like that. See? Oops, and I got some blue in there. Watch out for that, because if you get if you get a little of a different color in there, it's going to turn. You're going to end up with a green. That's not what you want. So, um, in fact, let me put out some more white and do that again, because I'm afraid that if I do this, it's going to get green all into my clouds, and I definitely don't want a bunch of green in my clouds. So, just a nice bright yellow with a lot of white nice thick blob of paint and um, I can dip it down in my brush down in my medium a little bit and work it back into that so that it's nice and soft um, so look you can really see how now it's nice and gooey on the brush and I'm gonna pick out some areas where I really want to pull out some light to that and burnt sienna and dull it down just a little bit but I'm gonna do the same thing over here but remember I'm careful not to make it too light I want it to be a little bit darker than my lights over here and then you can even take a little bit of this color and you don't want to touch it too much because you'll get too much blue on your brush but just a couple little spots like, like that like this it just kind of suggests where the cloud is breaking up and like watch this I can take this light and go like this right and make a ba basically a big kind of a squarish shape right and then I can come back with my blue and just shape it up and give it more of an organic shape so I come in there and go so see see how we're cutting back in breaking up little areas in there now I can even use this color to pull your eye back down over here watch this see how that grabs your eye and pulls it back down and it actually echoes you start to pick up on some of this blue snow color down here and by kind of repeating that color down here it moves your eye around the composition now I want to just pick out a few little dark lines here and I'm just going to be using my burnt sienna my burnt sienna and ultramarine blue pick out a few dark lines here and bring them for this tree branch there's a couple little places where that comes in there don't want to overdo it it's so easy to try to um, 
You grab a little bit of black. It's so easy to try to, to overdo this when you're when you're painting these these little tree branches. There's a tendency to want to do way too much. And I'll talk more about in. Uh, I'm going to do some advanced classes. Offer some adv more advanced uh, painting classes eventually, and I'll talk more about. Um, developing a painting and, and how much you want to get into drawing it but at this basic on for these basic videos I really want to encourage you to uh, to to just get the basic shapes laid in and think more about composition about where your center of interest is and how you're gonna basically orchestrate some big shapes to get the viewers eye to go to that area so um, some little trees back here. I'm going to step back now. I'm going to walk back about 15 feet and look at it. See, I really think that I'm getting close at this point. You know, <laughs> a funny thought came to me. I was at the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts and I was looking at some of these paintings and I was amazed at how loose uh, some of them are and how they kept some of these areas just kind of unfinished looking and I was thinking you know anybody can learn to finish a painting but it takes a real artist to stop before they're finished and call it finished and uh, <laughs> it's kind of a funny thing that came into my mind but it, it's true because um, there is certain qualities to a, to a sketch or to a real quick study there's energies that, that you can work right out of there and once you lose them you can never get them back so I say get out there and make a lot of starts and leave worrying about finishing them for later um, you know there's always time to learn how to finish something but I think that the important thing is to, to learn how to seize a moment on campus and just go after some big essentials um, and that's what we're doing that's what we're doing with these beginning videos so uh, I'm not going to take this much, too much further. I'm just going to kind of leave it in this unfinished state because when I stepped way back, I really liked the movement. There's this nice circular motion. We've, get, we've got this nice S going in there. There's just enough suggestion of some detail. So um, there might be some little things that I'll do. Um, maybe soften this, you know. Um, just soften an edge here or there. Um, pop just a little bit of this in over here kind of suggested that sky is back there but I really don't want to do too much all right I think I'm gonna stop before I uh, overwork this thing I like the energy I stepped back there and, and checked it out from about 15 feet away and I I really like it I uh, you know I, I want to encourage you not to overwork your paintings um, I think it's 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 easy to get caught up and, and before you know it you've overworked an area um, and then then you're just playing this catch-up game where you're trying to overwork to match the one area that you've ever worked and then before you know it you can't get back that spontaneous energy so um, don't be afraid to stop before you feel like it's you know finished um, there's no right or wrong way to do this thing what's most important is that you're out there having fun and implementing some of these ideas and the more you do it the easier it'll get and the more you'll start to see the magic uh, happen on the canvas so so um, I've got a couple links in the description one is to my fine art website kylebuckland.com where you can view and purchase paintings uh, the other one is a patreon page my patreon page for the channel so if you want to become a patron and support the channel you can do that through the patreon page um, if you haven't subscribed already, you can subscribe and click the bell icon to receive email notifications when I upload a new uh, video. And I'm probably going to do another art musing video this week. I meant to do one last week, but things got a little hectic and I didn't get to it. But I, that's where I just sit down and talk a little bit about painting and art and life in general. So, um, But I'll definitely be back next week with another beginner vi uh, demo. So be sure to stay tuned and uh, I really appreciate everybody watching we hit a thousand subscribers last week that's awesome um, I really appreciate you guys and I, and I, and I just want to, to tell you that uh, you're doing awesome I know it's in the beginning it can be tough um, you know but just just keep plowing through it and I guarantee you that stuff will stuff will start to happen that you're proud of so um, I'll see you next week